Welcome to Reconsider. I'm Bill Hartman. This is the podcast to challenge you to ask better questions, to look beyond traditional models of thinking and arrive at better health and fitness solutions. Okay, so this is definitely not going to be one of our more popular podcasts, but that's okay. Because <laughs> I can't imagine a lot of general, I can't imagine a lot of general fitness and general population folk are going to even understand what we're talking about or uh, care. But it's it's just something that well, I they, think we sh- maybe should they discuss, should, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if so, the question comes along like, well, where does all this stuff come from? This can be somewhere that those people can go instead of trying to search. So the problem that we're trying to the thing that we're trying to get everyone to reconsider with this episode is what your model even is. Uh, right. And then to reconsider what they believe and all these like misconceptions about what the model, what your model is. Because if you, someone tried to type into Google and figure out things about your model, they're going to come across all these things like the the expansion, compression, gate, respiration model. They're gonna, <laughs> they talk about they, they're going to. They're going to be pulling a third person account of like one person that like listened to you talk about this on a podcast three years ago. And it's just this terrible telephone game. So I figure we should talk about what your model is or what your model isn't and sort of mm-hmm. give people the opportunity to learn about it. Yeah. Do you want me, you want me to just bring up something? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I guess we can, let's, let's go back to how it evolved into where it is now. I remember pretty yeah. specifically a text message chain when I was in New York that was something along the lines of like, I've been doing all of this wrong. I need to completely tear it down and rebuild yes. it. Yes. And we're like, <laughs> it was, we're just like, we're just talking to each other. Like, is Bill going to make it through the night? Are we going to have to like, <laughs> yeah, there was this moment in time of uh, like, like, so you know, you do things to solve problems. And then there's this like, it was, it was like this peak moment of absolute frustration. (laughs) Right. And it was just like, okay, this just, you just hit too many walls and there's too many impasses. It's like, okay, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something that's better. And, and what has happened in from my perspective is that we've accumulated a bunch of stuff over time and accepted them as absolutes and everything tries to fit into that rather than saying, well, wait a minute, do we have something that's closer to reality that would be totally coherent, which makes like, this is why something is beneficial. This is why something works. And then not having two separate explanations, but having like one foundation that says, oh, this is, this is reality. And then you start to link these things coherently and then everything starts to make a whole lot more sense. The hard part is, is that you come off sounding half crazy because you have to speak against so many things that have been traditionally accepted as absolute or fact or whatever. You go back to A.V. Hill who got, I believe, a Nobel Prize for his work on muscle contraction. And then you go, nah, I'm not buying it. You know, and that's that's really difficult to do. And I'm not refuting what A.V. Hill did. I think it's incredibly valuable. But I think that there's, again, think about how far back that research goes. I think that we've gotten so much better. We've got so much better information. But, but instead of trying to fit something into a, a pre-existing representation. It's like, how does this change the representation? Right? How is this making it better? Right? Yeah. If, are we are we really going to fall back on on sliding filament theory that has enough evidence to say, well, we really need to call this back into question? Are we really going to say that uh, um, c- cellular channels behave as it's taught in school when we know that the energy capacity of a cell isn't sufficient to support that model at all, right? But we still teach these things because, well, it's just easier and it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, good and enough. So, well, there, there you go. It's like, it's like it kind of makes enough sense and then you're just going to forget it after you take the test. That's kind of how school right. is. Well, that leads me and, to that word I like to use that you've never heard of, satisficing. 
<laughs> okay. I'll, I will default. It's, is it in, satisfying or not? Yeah. Um, but, but ultimately, ultimately what it is, it's like, it's like clear house, start over and let's, let's literally look at, okay. Um, and this gets a little weird when, when you say something like this, because it, it, it's like, how does the universe work? Like, what are the absolute rules and what are these principles? And so you kind of have to start there. And I claim no expertise um, in in something like like physics. Um, I, I buy children's books literally to try to understand the, the really deep concepts. Um, and, and I start there. And, and then you say, okay, well, these are the physical principles upon which the universe works. It's like, we're part of that universe. We have to follow those principles. Now, how, how would we do it? And some of the representations that have been utilized are useful and they can get you so far. But this is where I was sort of banging my head into the wall to use a concept um, like Newtonian gravity. Right. New Newton's representation of gravity works so well that you can send astronauts to the moon and bring them home safely using that representation of gravity. But then Einstein comes in and says, no, it doesn't really work this way. And he actually has a better representation of gravity. But Newton was good enough. And then the question mark is, is like, OK, are we going to just stick with good enough? Or are we going to try to get closer and closer to reality? And that's what I'm trying to do. Right. Crazy as it sounds. Um, and it, again, it's totally born out of frustration. It's like it just wasn't like what I was doing wasn't good enough. There has to be some way to, to better represent this. Some of the things that that, you know, I haven't utilized or con considered in in a long time, like 10, 15 years are now coming back because, oh, that works better now because I understand where it's going to fit better because I do have a more coherent representation of what I think reality is. I think it's an easier way to explain it, even though it's hard at first because you have to go against tradition. When I tell people that, yeah, get rid of the three planes concept, it's like, that's a bitter pill to swallow, right? Because we do live in what we perceive as a, as a three-dimensional world. If you throw it in time, it becomes, becomes 4D, but we do live in that world. And so again, the, the, Three planes kind of thing can be useful. But when we talk about humans moving dynamically, it kind of falls by the wayside because now we have to trigger, try to figure out, it's like, like which direction is such and such a plane now at this moment in time? Because it's like, it's like trying to pin the tail on the donkey on a moving donkey. And so then right. it, it kind of falls by the wayside. Structurally alone. Looking at structure alone, saying these are the constraints. This is how the constraint behaves in um in this universe that follows these principles it's like oh that means that if your constraint is different than mine then we have limitations in in both cases and therefore our strategies will be similar but different how can they be different so i was talking about reverse engineering the process is like i can't reverse engineer any process unless i know where the starting conditions were and that's that's a big chunk of, of what I tend to talk about in public because that's an easier piece of it to grasp and say, oh, structure does this. These are the options. And this is how you get from point A to point B. Right. So I think I want to try to recap what you're saying about like where this comes from a, a lot <laughs> of. So trying to understand that in order to create the most useful models, there will need to be some sort of coherence and unification of the principles that seem to work with all models. So with it's like everything. Regard, yeah, Correct. so principle being like something that's true without context even being necessary. And, and there you go. And, and those would be re referred to commonly as first principles. So we can go right. back to Uncle Aristotle if we want to. And we can we can say that, OK, these are these are the absolutes. And then we have to we have to understand how things behave relative to yeah. those absolutes. What? So so if you want to give this a name, if you want to give this a name. Because I because people try. Right. And then they 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 fall short. It is a unified model. It's a unified model of human performance. That's what it would be. It's like, how do we do things based on the 
the world that we live in within a specific context. And that's, and, and again, that's, that's why there's so many pieces that, again, we, we don't talk about all the pieces in public because again, a lot of things that are, are require a great deal of looking at other concepts. So you, you talk about something as simple as a gradient. It's like a lot of people don't, don't spend time thinking about that because they're, they're trying to resolve something in the gym. And while we don't talk about a gradient concept in the gym, if we understand that, then we understand how movement would actually take place to a, to a greater degree. And then that provides us better problem solving skills by understanding that concept. Right. Right. Yeah. I think it would be, I think it would be useful to, cause this is one of those topics where we could just let you run with it and you would talk about it with like some pretty, in some pretty like good detail, but it'll be a little all over the place. So I'm trying to figure out a way like as a producer to, to be able to real, to be able to reel you in so we can kind of boil it down a little bit uh, for a better understanding of what, what it is. And I think well, like, I mean, one of the, a couple of things that I'm thinking of just from based on what you, we've been talking, what you've been talking about so far are just uh, there, there's this mental model for investing that has like the, the, like the commonly held beliefs versus the contrarian beliefs. And when, when you have an investment that's both contrarian and correct, the return on the investment and the potential for how good it will be is way higher than the commonly held beliefs that are also going to give you the, a good outcome. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that you were striving for that didn't really exist. There wasn't anything you could sort of just apply there wasn't a model that you could just apply and you could improve with your outcomes in any way that they because you were already doing a good enough job with people but you just knew that there was something else there so it's like you start you start to look around for these grand unifying theories and principles and it's it's honestly the bane of progress for many fields like physics specifically the the visit the Physicists in quantum in the quantum realm versus the Newtonian realm don't ever want to get along or say the others are right. So that's just held back uh, physics right. for years. So you have these two right. different theories that so there's no connection between them. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what you're trying to overcome with the health and performance stuff as well. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to start with like a foundation, then the, the constraints become a, a pretty good place to start. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, sorry, I kind of got away. Well, maybe right. I'll edit that down. I did. I had to do that last time. I edited a bunch of stuff out because it was just like us in silence, humming and <laughs> humming and hawing about certain things. But yeah, like I think if we're able to almost bullet point some of the bigger topics or the bigger principles uh, or unifying principles of the model, I think that would be helpful. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Yeah. Um, so the physical constraints. So, so we're talking about like human physical constraints. Um, so everybody is not created equally in, in that regard, right? We have certain variations of structure and we can look at, we can look at two extremes. And so that's the foundation of the, of uh, when I constructed the archetypes and, and people have looked at archetypes for a very, very long time, but Again, there would be like mention of something here, mention of something there, and then never a coherent absolute representation of what was possible or what would happen within, again, certain contexts. And so so that was a big chunk of the beginning of this. It's like, oh, I got a, I got an offensive lineman in American football and I got a high jumper, right? And I'm going to say that those two people behave the same way. Right. They are arms and legs and axial skeletons and and muscles and such. But the reality is, is they don't achieve things in the in, to the same degree in the same same way. They both have different capabilities. That's why an offensive lineman rarely can high jump nearly as high as, as a high jumper, nor could a high jumper, you know, run full speed into a 300 pound body and hold position. Right. I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. And so we have to, to consider the, the influence of constraints. And so you break those down progressively. You say, well, under this circumstance, how would this behave? And then under another circumstance, what would what would be the outcome? And, the, and that's literally where you start. 
And then you say, well, well, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I think, so I think that, so the, so people listening to this might say like, well, why is that so important? And why are you mentioning that first? And it's like, well, if you're, if the, the goal is to treat a human being and everyone is under this assumption that all human beings are created equal, then that's a huge, that's going to be a huge point of interference or, or failure for progress for people. Absolutely. Just because that's, that's not how it works. So what you, what you're offering is this idea that you, you sort of looked at all these people and you looked at the research and you started to see that there were these trends towards different archetypes of the human body. And there has right. been for a uh, hundred years, maybe, maybe longer than well, that. Well, more than that. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's, it's just in terms of considering it, considering it from a health perspective or like an osteopath perspective. It's probably in the last 150 oh, yeah, years. Yeah, right? I mean, you you go, but you'll go back past 1900. Like, like you'll yeah. you'll see it show up. It, and it, so uh, you go like to the AT still literature, right. which is pre 1900, and and there are, believe it or not, there are textbooks. They are horrible and miserable to read through, but they do exist. <laughs> Um, the language yeah. is weird. The language is funny. Um, they did not have, think about this, no antibiotics, no x-rays, um, really poor representations of what we could measure from the, from a health perspective. So what they had, you know what they used? They used shape and they used movement. And they said, people in this shape tend to be sick. People in this shape tend to not be sick. People that can do this tend to be healthier. People that can't do this tend to be unhealthy. And you literally start there, right? Yeah. And you used to start, you, you're literally, it's, it's almost like moving through time. You start to move through time and you say, oh, so, so start recognizing this, recognize this. I tell you what was the big interruption was when like, again, antibiotics was a big thing that, that, that took away what was probably a lot of progress in regards to understanding what we can understand now. They were doing it without the the bells and the whistles, like they were doing it in practice and, and getting better and better and better at that. And then there was like this medicine that, you know, saved the world, essentially took away so many problems. And then medicine got better and better and better. And then it started to be here, take this here, take this instead of saying, hey, you need to go home and you need to do this exercise. Um, you need to get into this position literally getting into a position to enhance some other element of health. Because what we found is like people that are built like you that do this tend to get better. Like literally that's how they, they, they made these associations. So that information right. is not useless. It's in fact, it's very useful in, especially in the environment that, that you and I work in where we don't have access to like all the fancy schmancy, equipment that we could spend hours and hours and hours trying to come up with some diagnostic on, we have to use proxy measures and, and movement is one of the better ones as a representation of almost everything from the state yeah. of your nervous system to fluid balance, to um, coordination, et cetera. Right. And so, again, right. You, yeah. And you, I think, you, go ahead. yeah, when, when we're talking about, when we're talking about models that are useful and the, let's say we'll call them the most useful and they're coherent and they have these grand unifying principles, what you're saying about like being able to measure it in a very generalized. So it's this sort of art of like becoming a generalist and then understanding that these general principles and these shapes of things that you don't need all these fancy instruments or certain types of made up assessments or tools mm -hmm. to use in order to measure them. You can just sort of see them. They're, <laughs> they're the things that tend to be the most true. So I think we, we just have to keep coming back to this sort of idea of what first principles are right? Um, and how those need to apply to a model if, in order for it to be the most useful to do what, anything really. Where can we go? What, what element, what element can we discuss so next we, that would be I mean we talked about we talked about structure we talked mm -hmm. about the constraints yeah um and then how that relates to shape and yeah. how over a hundred years ago people were already considering the different shapes and their effects on movement and health so it's not like right. none of this is new so that's another thing I think people need to understand about the model is is your model is not you're not reinventing anything no. And in fact, a lot of models leading up to you coming up, up with your own were trying to reinvent things 
or we're just continuing to change the rules to cater to their specific commercial model, which is a huge that's, problem. And that, that's a big, and that's, well, I would, I would lead, I would lead towards that, that they are, they are trying to evolve a system that fits into some sort of pre-constructed tradition. Right. I think, I think that's, I think that was, that was one of the things that I, I felt held back by was that, well, they tell me that this is how it works. And then this is why I would do something. And it's like, okay, that means that, and then I go to something else and, and it's like, well, this system says it works this way. And then this system says it works this way, or they would use some sort of nebulous concept, right? Which led to the list of dirty words, right? right. Which like, like dysfunction It's like, well, what is exactly does that mean? Or is it just the system moving in the direction that it should under the circumstance? Now explain that, explain why that happens. You say, well, that's not dysfunction. That's just how it behaves in this circumstance. Well, that's what leads you to coherence rather than saying that this is wrong and you're making it right. It's just like, this is how the behavior actually takes place. That's what I would prefer to understand versus labeling something as something and then having that that concept perpetuated, like as you have stated, like the worst game of telephone ever. People just start using it, the word and then jargon that is useful at some point in time becomes less useful because it's just used generically without any depth of explanation. And again, I was just very dissatisfied with that. I, I, I yeah, don't think it was, it's not helpful. It's not helpful to say, right. oh, that's dysfunctional. It's like rel relative to what? Relative yeah, to what? Just, maybe they, repetition. maybe it's perfectly useful in a certain circumstance based on the available constraints, the way those constraints interact and the experience of the individual. Maybe that yeah. was the perfect thing to do. You didn't like it or the outcome was less desirable, but maybe that was the perfect solution under the circumstance. Yeah, and then it becomes the the problem that part of the problem, one of the issues that we're trying to discuss and one of the reasons why it's important to discuss them are people, they, they try to research and look up what your model is. They watch a couple of videos about it and think that mm -hmm. they understand it. And then right. they go out there and they talk about it and almost try to teach it in a way. Um, yeah, they shouldn't like do that. Pretending, yeah, they shouldn't do that. But that's that's the reality of what ends up happening. People, I understand. people, I understand. people will copy. I mean, that's the culture of of uh, content creation. It always has been. People just copy things and then yeah. um, try to take advantage of them. I think one of the things that um, I wanted to mention about that though is that this is really just like it's it's repetition without understanding. Um, yes. It's uh, and I I think. Um, what is it called? There's a really funny story about Max Planck and his chauffeur. So that's uh, it, the, the, the concept is called Planck level knowledge. So when uh, when Max Planck used to go on these tours and he would give these speeches all over the place, there was this is when there was no Internet and no one was really talking to anyone else about this stuff. His chauffeur and driver would be present at all the, the presentations. So he started to uh -huh. learn the presentation almost better right. than than anyone that was there. And at right. one point, his driver gave one of the presentations because no one knew what Max Planck looked like in this one place. There was like <laughs> there was no there was no like newspapers being spread around and people knowing pictures of Mac, what Max looks like. So the, the driver gave the uh, the presentation and then no one knew any different until the end when someone asked a bunch of follow up questions and the, the driver said, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to ask my chauffeur for the answers to those. <laughs> That's awesome. And then Max came That's up and, and did it. Yeah, I love that That's story brilliant. just because it's it's kind of the problem of like people parroting what they think. They just yeah. take a very surface level understanding and then they just repeat it and then they throw a name to it that maybe wasn't even intended by the creator of that thing. Right. Um, yeah, but I, I think I, it's not yeah. that I don't. It's not that I don't appreciate appreciate the effort. It's just that that you know the the depth of understanding. It's the best timing ever. <laughs> it's mowing so, day. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, Zoom. So this it's, one of the problems is day. 
I mean, I don't well, know if in I don't know if if right now Riverside is is taking that out of the video, like the audio, or oh, we're just getting well, we'll the raw see. audio. Yeah, but I mean, we, no, we will no, see. Or no, just went by. He'll be, he'll be going. He'll be coming around again. Um, yeah. No, it's it's just it, it's the unfortunate dilution of the information, right? And and again, it's like when you play the game of telephone and the message changes and the message changes, and then somebody will ask a question and then it's answered. With, without the depth of understanding. And then that person walks away with what they think that they understand. And then they try to explain it to the next person and so on and so forth. It just, again, it just dilutes the, the quality of, of the information. Yeah. So I, I appreciate, I appreciate the effort. I truly do. But it's not like, it's not like you could spend an hour listening to, to this and, and walk away and go, I got it. You know, cause I'm still working well, yeah. on it. Some people will think that they can, though. So the the problem well, with I mean you know, that's a, that's the problem with them, applying guess, and, and it's you know yeah applying trying to blindly apply a model the the almost the negative one of the negative components of doing that is that even if you poorly apply a model you can sometimes get a positive outcome or what's of perceived course. as a positive outcome. Yeah. So then it becomes this really crappy perpetuating problem where yeah. someone has a misguided interpretation of a model they apply that misguided interpretation it gives them a result that they find favorable and then they just right. keep perpetuating how this misguided information is that original model when it's not right right yeah yeah so that's so yeah. you know there's a quality there's a qualitative element that's and it, you know if people want to pay for something that that is like, like some people want to buy Nike, nikes that are not like they buy knockoffs right yeah um, and they're they're satisfied with a knockoff, right? and that's fine if if that's what they want. If they want if they want the, you know, a lesser quality uh, product because it's probably still better than what they've been doing. Because it's like as long as they think that they're better, then they're probably going to be happy, and that's fine, right. I guess. And yeah. and the response to you know people are going to listen to you say something like that and be like, well, what makes you think that you're the originator of any of these thoughts? And those people weren't listening to anything that we talked about in the first thirty minutes of what we've talked about. Uh, but to, to have an answer to those people who are listening that would listen, it's that Bill's not saying that he originated any of these ideas, but the unification of the principles has not been done in this way before by anyone. So there well, are as far there's as experts I mean, as like, far I as we know, know you know. I haven't read everything. And I'm, and sure, I, well, I'm sure there will be elements of this that, that, <laughs> that I think that I have put together that someone else has recognized somewhere else right? well yeah I mean, there's you know it's, it's impossible to be the originator of a thought right right so you know but but again it's like i'm only offering my perspective right like again the work the work that that i've done to put together something that is useful that is what i'm trying to share right with with other people and if they find it useful great and if they don't lawnmower they, if they don't, they get the lawnmower. <laughs> What's funny is that if, no, if, but if they don't, it's like, that's okay. To, that's okay too. Yeah. It's like, like, you know, no hard feelings. It's like, okay, but you know, give it, give it its justice. Like, yeah. right. There's a, there's and a then like, of, there's, it's, yeah. it's, I think it's important to sort of preface. If you're going to talk about it, you need to preface with like, you know where it comes from in that you don't have the same level of understanding so you need to like refer people to where the model comes from and i feel like that's a big so that if if your goal as a creator or as a trainer or a therapist is to be the most useful to the people you're trying to serve and they have questions or they want to know like how a model is originated or it's applied they can the, the best thing for them to do is refer them to the originator of that model and not necessarily just give them like this third person interpretation of something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it, I think it'll ultimately be an inevitable that it'll happen. Right. Right. You know, so everybody I wants think, to be but, better. Everybody wants to be better. Yeah. I don't know if that's true though. <laughs> I think people, I think a lot of people are actually in a race to find satisfaction and what good enough means for them. 
And for them, if that means just copying and pasting someone's workout program, because it works good enough with the people that they work with, and then just, you know, concerning their lives with what are the best Netflix shows that are on right now. I think that's what a lot of people are doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. I think that that's what, I think that's what the world is. Uh, oh, and a lot of people. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're concerned with you know, the 16%. It's one of the reasons why that is correct. Yeah. And those are going to be the people that are the early adopters who are the people that innovate and ask, keep, continue to ask questions, which is the, right. the reason we did this podcast to begin with. Right. It's just, we, we, I, I want to push people towards a stronger representation. Like whether we can see reality or not, we want to try to get as close to it as we can. Well, we can see three dimensions of it. That's all we're, <laughs> that's all we're equipped to be able to that's, perceive. But, unfortunately, but, but, you know, but my, my point is, is, is like, I, th I think that, and I think I was actually talking with Pat at one point about this. Yeah, you did. It's I like, remember on his podcast. Yeah. Shout it, out, shout like, out it, Pat Davidson. Yeah. I was talking to Pat and, and, uh, and we brought this up. It's, it's like, it's like, we got it. Like everybody has a representation of what they think they're doing or what's happening. Right. Clear as it may be accurate as it may be. We all have something like I had a model that I was working from for years and then became dissatisfied, hit too many impasses, didn't have enough solutions or answers. That's what I should say. Didn't have enough answers. And that, that's what pushes you in a, in a direction to try to find something something better. And then maybe you have something that, that is helpful for other people uh, as well. But what we should find is that all the gaps start to close. Like the further we go into this, it's like it, it shouldn't be like, no, I think it's this. I think it's that. It should be like, oh, now I see how this stuff converges into something that is coherent and universal. Right. And, and again, that's that's the goal. Yeah. And I think when when you're striving to be the most useful in whatever it is, because I think over time I just start to I start to classify myself. I know you start to do this as well. I probably just stole this from you. To get back to the whole stealing concept, but uh, <laughs> over time, I just become less of a personal trainer or coach and more of just like a problem solver. Yeah. And a lot of what I end up doing with clients is almost like life coaching because it's certain physical aspects are going to be affected by emotional, mental, sleep yeah. habits, dietary think, stuff. And it just, I think, I think, I think I have a better, I think I have a better title uh, than problem solver. Yeah. It's a tr it's a trade off manager is what it is mm. because we're really not solving anything. They're, like you're always robbing Peter to pay Paul under some circumstance. Like if I do something, something else has to change relative to that. And and I think that you know I'll give you I'll give you an example. I had a, had a, a person come in and they had some stuff that they're that they're dealing with physically. Gave them an, an explanation that was. I, that I think was understandable. And her response was, you mean that, that I'm never going to change? It's like, no, you're not going to be a different person. Like you're not going to change your tendencies. What you're going to learn to do is to manage those tendencies. So they're no longer interfering with the things that you want to be able to do. Because the reality is, it's like, that's not necessarily a solution. It is literally, it's like, I am going to try to teach you how to manage who you are, what you are in this context. Right. Um, and so, so I don't think that we're necessarily solving a problem as much as we are showing them how to manage, like, like I said, the, the trade-offs that are going to be involved. It, it would be like, you know, a marathon runner wanting to be a power lift. It's like, okay, if you want to do that, you're going to have to give up the endurance aspect of, of what you've been, been training for. That would be like a, you know, an extreme representation. It's like, you're always going to have to take something from somewhere and, and give that up to get to another, another place um, that would be in a uh, place and time as it were. Reconsider is sponsored by Substance Nutrition. Go to substancenutrition.com, get your neuro coffee, better coffee, better brain, and synthesis, better protein, better body. Enter the coupon code RECON, R-E-C-O-N, and get free shipping on all of your orders.